All right, we're back. Um, awesome. So welcome to Battlesnake Official. We're live on Twitch. We're going to do a bit of a tutorial today using Go and Replit to kind of build your first Battlesnake. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Brad. I'm part of the Battlesnake team. I'm one of the people who get to work on Battlesnake full time, which is super awesome. Um, but also a lot of the documentation, a lot of the code that I'm going to be showing and kind of working through today uh, is made possible by uh, our sponsors, which are fantastic and, and we love them, um, as well as the uh, broader Battlesnake developer community. So uh, a lot of a lot of people are kind of working behind the scenes to make this happen. I just get to be the one on camera today. So um, awesome. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what Battlesnake is, what our goals are, and how uh, how it actually works. And then I'll dive into some actual coding examples live using Replit um, to uh, actually power a snake. And we'll see how we'll see how strong my my Go programming <laughs> is these days. Um, so uh, before we get into the coding, I got a couple slides here we can that we can just use to talk about um, sort of what Battlesnake is and what we're going to talk about today. So um, yeah, so we're watching the Get It Started tutorial with Go and Replit. Uh, here's the topics we're going to cover. We're going to talk very briefly about what Battlesnake is. I'm going to talk about the rules and the objectives of the game. We're going to talk about how the API works. And then I'm going to show you the starter projects that are on uh, open source on GitHub to get you going. And then we're going to actually try to code one of these things live. And we'll see how far we get. Uh, so what is Battlesnake? If you're not familiar, you can check it out, play.battlesnake.com and get all the information there. But uh, sort of at its core, Battlesnake is an online programming game played by developers all over the world. So programmers build snakes to play the game. We run tournaments, we run events, we run competitions, we run live arenas uh, to see who can come up with creative programming solutions and creative um, technical implementations. Uh, to see who can sort of solve this problem uh, best. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we see a lot of creativity. We've been doing it for a few years. Um, so you can get involved at play.battlesnake.com. And if you want, you can follow along with this tutorial and try to build your first Battlesnake. Let's talk about the rules and objectives of the, of the game. Um, just make sure audio is recording well. Yeah, there we go. Sweet. Okay. Uh, rules and objectives. Uh, so like I said, uh, Battlesnake is played uh, autonomously. You're writing code to power your snake. Um, so at its core, Battlesnake is an autonomous survival game. And the goal uh, is to survive longer than your opponents. It's a multiplayer game. You're controlling one Battlesnake on the board, but there are other Battlesnakes on the board that are controlled by other people's code. Uh, and your job is to out uh, outmaneuver, out-strategize, and, and ultimately outlast them. Uh, each snake, battle snake moves uh, independently. Everyone has the same information, and you just try to avoid being eliminated and try to be the last one standing. Uh, the way to do this, uh, there's a couple couple core mechanics, um, and these are pretty straightforward. If you're familiar with battle snake, these will these will make immediate sense. Um, if you're not, uh, these are pretty simple and it's pretty easy to get going. Um, but the first one is there's going to be food on the board. And so as your battle snake moves around the board, you need to eat food in order to replenish your health. Your battle snake has a, a fixed amount of health or a set a maximum amount of health. On every turn, you will lose one health. So every turn of the game, every time you move one square, you will lose one health, uh, eventually going to zero. And if your health reaches zero, you will be eliminated. You will lose the game. So... Uh, what you need to do to prevent that from happening is you need to eat the food, which is represented by these red discs that are on the screen here. Every time you eat food, it will take your health from wherever you are up to uh, 100%, um, but it will also make your snake a little bit longer, which will make it harder to maneuver, harder to strategize, uh, and eventually uh, make it much more difficult for you to uh, r remain alive and not be eliminated. So that's sort of the crux of the game. All these, all snakes have the same goal of staying alive and trying to eat food and trying to uh, avoid each other as long as possible. The second objective is you want to stay on the game board. This one's pretty straightforward, but if your snake, if your battle snake moves uh, off uh, either the upper edge or the left or the bottom or the right edge, uh, then you will be eliminated. 
Uh, all Battlesnake games are played on a grid. They're not necessarily square. These examples are square, but they don't have to be square boards. But if you move outside of that grid, then uh, you are eliminated. The third and sort of last idea um, and rule here is if your Battlesnake runs into either yourself or to another Battlesnake, then you are also eliminated. So this was what makes things tricky. And this, what, this is what makes maneuvering within the game challenging and strategic. So if you run into your own Battlesnake, as is seen in this example, uh, you'll be eliminated. If you run into another Battlesnake, you will also be eliminated. The one exception to this rule is head-to-head -head collisions. So if two Battlesnakes collide head-to-head -head and their heads, their heads overlap, then the uh, shorter one will be eliminated and the longer one will survive. And so this is where eating more food than your opponents could give you a strategic advantage in some situations, but also makes you longer. So it makes you, that's the trade-off, makes it more difficult to maneuver, but also gives you this, this head-to-head -head advantage if you wanted to take advantage of that. Uh, if both battle snakes are the same length, then they're both eliminated. So that the, the tiebreaker case is uh, both are just eliminated. So you have to be strictly longer than in order to gain advantage in that situation. The last battle snake remaining on the board wins. And we host competitions, we host tournaments, we host arenas. There's a whole bunch of different ways to get involved to test how, uh, how well your battle snake does against other developers. Uh, not just locally, not just in Canada, but also worldwide. Um, this is an example of one of the trophies we give it at one of our live events. Uh, we also do a ton of virtual events, so follow us here on Twitch, follow us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, and check it all out at playitupbalistink.com to find out when the next event might be and when the next tournament and competition is. Let's talk really quickly about the API. So this is the actual API that you uh, that developers use to play the game. The way the game is actually played is uh, developers program a live web server that implements this API. And so what happens is you take your code, you deploy it uh, somewhere live on the internet using your favorite cloud provider or a hosting service or whatever, whatever you're comfortable with or whatever you want to learn. And uh, the game engine will send your server uh, request, API requests, uh, to ask it how it wants to move in different situations and how you implement your response to those requests will dictate how your Battlesnake behaves in the game. So what this means is that your Battlesnake, uh, your code has to be running live on the internet and uh, it's ultimately represented by a unique URL that will be called by the game engine in real time to uh, ask your Battlesnake how it wants to behave. This means that you can actually use any programming language, any technology, any cloud provider you want. It doesn't matter. You don't have to implement in a specific language. You don't have to use a specific library. Um, as long as your code is running somewhere on the internet, you can play the game. We have um, a lot of developers that use uh, very popular uh, and modern web programming languages, but we also have a lot of people that use Battlesnake as a, as a reason to try something different. Um, try something new, try something old, try something they've heard about, but they weren't really sure um, how it worked. And it's a really interesting and fun problem to solve. And it's a really good way to actually uh, explore a new technology, um, not just languages, but also if you want to get into AI or reinforcement learning, or you want to try a new cloud provider, lots of interesting things you can learn just by programming a Battlesnake if you want to. The actual API that it gets called has four commands and they're all all four of them are actually really 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 simple uh, the first one is just to get at the root URL uh, where, where you're going to return some information about your battle snake about who you are um, about what color you want to be on the game board what you want your head and tail to look like um, and will the game engine will use that endpoint to just make sure that your you know your URL is active where you're running your own code and then also to determine how to how to render you on, on the game board. So that one just gets called sort of periodically by the game engine uh, whenever it needs to update that information. Actually running a game involves three commands. You're going to get a post to slash start, which will signal the start of a game. That's just to tell you that uh, a game has started and you're in it and give you some introductory, some uh, the first initial state of the of the game board. 
The second command is the post slash move command. This is where the uh, majority of your Battlesnake logic is going to be. It's going to be in this move command here. That's where your Battlesnake looks at the current game board, uh, makes a decision of what direction it wants to move in next based on where it is, where the other Battlesnakes are, and where the food is, uh, and then uh, returns that. And so this will be called... Uh, once for every turn of every game. So it moves moves your primary function that you're going to be implementing. We also send a, a command at the end of the game, which is a post to slash end. This just says the game's concluded. So if you want to see how well you did, see who won, see who, uh, how you were eliminated, uh, you can check that out. Um, or if you want to deallocate any resources on your end, you can do that as well. I'm not going to go into the technical details of all the commands, but I'll just do a brief sort of high level overview of the move command because it's certainly the most important. So for every post to slash move, you'll receive a bunch of information. You'll get a game ID telling you what game you're playing and uniquely identifying that. You'll get board height and width so you know how big the grid is that you're operating on. You'll get what turn number you're currently uh, playing. Um, you'll get a list of uh, all the other battle snakes as well as yourself and their locations on the game board. So you'll have perfect information of what's going on and everyone will receive the same information. You'll also be told where food is on the game board. So if you wanted to, you know, if you decided that you wanted to seek some food out and um, see, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. If you wanted to seek some food out, um, you could use that information to, to do that. And then also uh, we'll tell you where you, you know which of the snakes are, is you. We'll give you information about where your head is and, and this sort of thing. In response to this information for a move command, all you really need to do is decide all your battle snake needs to do and sort of the core problem that you're solving here is do you want to go up, down, left, or right? Those are the only four options for every battle snake on every turn. So you just have to reply with one of up, down, left, right, and then the game engine will move you in the same direction and then call move again with the, with the new game board state. This is the core loop of, of every game. The uh, I'll, I'll show an example of that in the, in the live code in a second, but that's the high level uh, how it works. The game board orientation, um, this matters just for coordinates so you understand what the coordinates mean when you receive them. So uh, we use sort of standard intuitive setup with zero, zero on the bottom left, uh, positive Y axis is, is up and positive X axis is uh, left to right. Uh, it's all zero indexed. So a board that is 12 by 12 will go from zero to 11 in, in both axes. Pretty straightforward, but it is something you'll, you'll want to know. Uh, the other technical notes, um, you have to reply with a 200. So if you error out on any of the commands, then the game engine will disqualify you or eliminate you depending on which command and what, what state the game's in. Uh, and also you have a fixed amount of time to reply. So you have, by default, you have 500 milliseconds to respond. Um, that's for most hosting solutions and most cloud providers, that's ample time. I wouldn't worry about it too much. But if you're looking to optimize your compute power, or optimize your tree search algorithms or your uh, AI resolution, um, 500 milliseconds is kind of the upper bound that you would want to start playing up against. Keep in mind that includes round trip latency. So that's measured from the uh, game engine side. So if, you know, if your servers are not located near uh, the game engine servers, then there's a additional milliseconds that'll be, um, that you'll have to take into account there. If your Battlesnake fails to do either of those, so fails to respond in time, fails to reply with a two, with a HTTP 200, then, um, like I mentioned, you will either be uh, eliminated if you, like you'll be removed from the game if you fail to respond to a start command or a get command. Um, uh, but uh, if you error out on a move command, then the game engine will just continue to move your snake forward in the last direction. So even if that means uh, you will be eliminated. It will it will push you in that direction. So that's the that's the incentive to get your responses in in time. All of this is spelled out in really great detail at docs.battlestank.com. So don't worry too much if you didn't get all of it right away. It's all there. Um, you can check it all out, and it's all probably worded a lot better and, and easier to find and, and that sort of thing. Let's talk really quickly about starter projects because I think they're a really great way to get started with your first Battlesnake. Uh, they're all open source. They're available at github.com slash Battlesnake official. Um, 
I'm going to show them right now. And they're also included in the docs. So uh, if you look here, I'm on the uh, I'm on docs.battlesync.com. Uh, on the left here is starter projects. I can click there and see. Uh, so there's a couple starter projects here that are maintained by our team, the, the full-time Battlesnake development team. Uh, there's one for Go, Java, JavaScript, Python, and Ruby. We're going to be using the Go one today. Um, the starter projects are sort of boilerplate code that you can deploy to any cloud provider you want and get uh, get a Battlesnake up and running, a fairly um, unintelligent Battlesnake up and running very, very quickly. So it lets you get started quickly and then get into the core, you know, the fun part of actually programming intelligence into your Battlesnake. There are some community starter projects. These are maintained by other developers in the community. Um, some of them use other languages like Kotlin or Rust. Some of them use other technologies like Lambda or Azure. Um, there's a new one that showed up uh, just recently using Deno, which is super cool. Uh, and there's also there's um, the AWS team uh, has also created a starter project for using SageMaker if you wanted to. So if you wanted to get into uh, reinforcement learning, you could do that. Those projects are all maintained by uh, independent developers, also. So, um, you know, your mileage may vary based on on what uh, what boilerplate code you're you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get provided with that. But all the all the official ones maintained by uh, our team are you're gonna get the same basic components with every project. Uh, if we go to here is the uh, so if I click on the go starter project here. Uh, here's the actual repo, and you'll see it's like it's really, really simple. There's some Git files, some Workflow files. There's only one Go file, so we we try to keep these starter projects very simple and try to um, keep them down to one file if we can. Um, and so in this case, we we've done that. And then there's also instructions here for getting started. So that's that's what we're going to go through today. Uh, that's all I have for slides. Um, we're going to go through the uh, official Go starter project, sort of from start to uh, having a Battlesnake that we can enter into games. And um, then we'll see how much time we have left. We might we might go a little bit further than that, but let's let's get to that point first. We're going to also, we're going to use a service called uh, Replit, which is uh, really, really quick, really, really easy if you're looking to do collaborative code development or um, really quick uh, project hosting. Uh, Replit is fantastic for that. I believe it's free to sign up um, and use at sort of a base level. So you should be able to be successful with Battlesnake on sort of a free Replit account, which is awesome. It has a whole bunch of advanced features if you want to get more in involved. You can use other cloud providers and you could do local development in your own IDE. You could deploy to AWS or Azure or GCP. Um, all of those are options. Just for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to we're going to use Replit because it's definitely the um, quickest and the easiest for uh, new developers, uh, and especially new Battlesnake developers, just to get a feel for what's going on. So don't feel like you have to use Replit necessarily, but it is a great way to get started. I'm going to um, let's do this here. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at the readme. Let's get started here with this uh, live coding attempt. Uh, so let's take a look at the readme. And the readme says a, a couple things. It says, you know, we're going to be using Replit specifically. Uh, this starter project can also be deployed to Heroku. So if you wanted to use Heroku and you're familiar with that, you could get that going as well. Heroku is free, but it's definitely a little bit more involved to get going. Uh, technologies here are really simple. We're only using standard like standard provided built-in Go 1.13 or 1.13 um, code. So there's no external dependencies here, which is great. That's how we like our starter projects to be of like as base and, and minimal as possible. We're going to need a Battlesnake account, which I have. So I have one right here. I have a fresh new account um, with no Battlesnakes, no teams, no games. Uh, this is ready, ready to go. This is what your account will look like when you create one um, for the first time. We're going to need a account, which I have here on the right hand side. So here I've got a folder in my Replit account with no um, no projects in it. So that's how I'll get started. And then uh, a GitHub account, which I have. 
it's just optional. If you want, you can link all these things. You could link GitHub to your Battlesnake account. You could link GitHub to your Replit account. You could also, um, Replit could uh, push code changes to your GitHub if you wanted to. There's a bunch of interesting things you could set up. So um, if you're working with other people um, or if you're looking to get more involved and have your have your Battlesnake last you know, longer than a few hours, um, definitely recommend getting that set up because there's a lot of cool things you can do. So let's walk through this tutorial and we'll see how far we get. Uh, so step one, it says uh, log into your REPL account. So I'm already logged in. Great. Uh, create a new REPL. So I'm going to go here to new REPL. Uh, it says uh, select import from GitHub. I'm going to import from GitHub and I'm going to paste the URL. This is just, I'm on this, the Go starter, starter project and take this URL and I'm just going to paste it in there. So pasted. Uh, and then it says uh, click import from GitHub. So we're going to do that. And now my REPL is going to start booting up. So it's going to clone. It's going to take the code from, from GitHub. It's going to clone it into my REPL project. It's going to install any dependencies I need, which I don't need in this case. Uh, and it's going to get everything up and running. So we'll give it a minute to, to get there. All right, it looks like it's running now. Uh, we'll take a look at our main.go file. We're not going to look at the code just yet, so don't worry about it too much. We're just going to worry about running this. Uh, and then the, the tutorial says once your REPL is ready, uh, we're going to click run at the top of the screen. So I'm going to click run up here. And this is going to run the, the, base, uh, the base starter project. I'm just going to rearrange some of these windows a bit. Awesome. So it looks like it's running. It says, um, once installation is complete, your server will start. You should see the following starting Valsnik server. So great. We see that right there. Perfect. We're good. Uh, the next step says above the terminal window, you'll see the live output from your server, including its URL. Uh, that URL is the one that we're going to use to create our Battlesnake. So um, it also says we should see the output that looks like this, which we do. So that matches up. That looks good. Looks like everything's running. Looks like we're running the starter project successfully now, which is awesome. The next step is to actually create the Battlesnake on battlesnake.com and uh, create some games. So the starter project, the starter Battlesnake can play games. It's ready to go. It can be entered into games. And so we should be able to do that and, and, and make sure that that's working. So I'm going to go to uh, my battlesnake.com account. I'm going to say uh, create new Battlesnake. We'll give it a name. We'll call it the um, Go and Replit Tutorial Battlesnake. Um, for the URL, you want to take this URL here from your Replit server. So this URL is, is where uh, Replit is running the code for us. It's where it's running our, our starter snake project. Uh, so I'm going to take this URL and I'm going to paste it in. And that's the URL that the game engine is going to use to talk to um, my Battlesnake and run my code and ask it where how it wants to move. Description, we're going to say live programmed on Twitch, exclamation point. Uh, project URL, if I wanted to, I could put my, my Replit project URL in here. If I wanted to share that, I could link to a public GitHub repo if I wanted to. This is just if you want to share your code with other Battlesnake developers, this is a really good way to do this. Um, a lot of Battlesnake developers actually choose to do this because uh, they want to show off what they're doing. They want to talk about ideas. They want to talk about different strategies. And so um, it's actually a really interesting way to get involved uh, in the community is just to link to your code directly. And so we encourage that. Under tags, you can say, um, you can kind of show off what technologies you're using. So in this case, we're going to tag it with Replit. Uh, we're going to tag our, uh, our snake with Python and say, that's, that's all we're using. We're using Python and Replit. And this will again let the community know sort of what languages and technologies I'm using to power this snake. That's all optional, but if you if you want to show off, you're you're welcome to. There's this checkbox also to allow anyone to add add Snake to a game. If it's checked, then my Battle Snake will be public, and anyone can add it to games. Uh, it's really good if you want to um, compete against your friends, or let your friends try, uh, or let other people try 
uh, play games against your snake or if you just want to see how your snake does in a variety of game situations um, checking this box is really fun for now i'm going to leave it unchecked because we want to um we want to just uh, try it in in this tutorial setting and uh plus it's not very smart right now so it's not going to do very well in those games so i'm going to hit save see right here my snake is created there's a little image of it um there's my title and it It'll also the uh, ballastnake.com will give me some information about my snake. So it'll say, you know, it, it verified that I'm using API V1, which is great. It says that my latency is very good. Uh, it took 190 milliseconds to respond to the get command, which is awesome. And so uh, that should be working great. Okay. Let's do, yeah, that's what we want. Let's get rid of that. So now, I haven't even looked at the code yet. It doesn't even matter because the, the starter project comes ready to run. So if I go to um, if I go to my snake, I can say create game. Let's create a game with this snake and see what it does. Let's see how it actually behaves in the game. So I'm going to create this. This is the game creation screen. There's a whole bunch of options here. You don't have to worry about it too much to get started. You could add more snakes to the game if you wanted. You could search for other people's snakes that they've made public. You can also just add random snakes to your game if you want to just play against random competitors and see what that looks like. You can also set your board size. Um, but right now we, we just want one, like a standard 11 by 11 board with our one go snake uh, in it. I'm going to hit start game. So you can see there's already output here on my REPL as it, as it plays the game. This is the game board on the left. So you can see my, my snake is this gray, is this gray battle snake here. I can hit play, uh, which will run the game through to completion. So you can see it, it goes pretty quickly. Um, you get, there's other ways you can slow it down, but that'll get the game going. And then what you can do is you can also step backwards and forwards uh, one turn or one frame, one turn at a time. So you can follow more closely what decisions your battle snake is making. So if I restart it, um, you can also use the arrow keys. You can press spacebar to start and stop. Uh, I think R will reload, and then you can do left, right to go forward and backwards frames. So I can go uh, forwards a couple of frames. So my snake goes down and then right, and then it looks like it eliminates itself by just colliding, colliding with itself. So that's that's great. It's running. Our snake is running. We're able to play a game. I don't even know how it's moving. I just know that it's moving around the board. Awesome. The next thing we're going to do, so it's kind of we've, uh, we now know how to create games. Oh, I should also talk about um, after you've created one game, you can just use this create rematch button here, which is super handy. And that starts a new game with the same snakes and the same board size and everything. So um, I can play a new game. And this one, I just go straight up and I, I go off the board. So if, uh, if I want to, test a new snake, I can, I can just hit this create, create rematch button here. Um, all right, going back to the tutorial, the next stage of this tutorial is to customize your battle snake. So we're going to pick um, how our battle snake looks on the game board. Uh, so it says changing appearance. So let, let's, let's change that gray. Like I don't like that gray. I don't like the default head. Let's make some changes here. So um, it says, uh, locate the handle index function inside main.go. Uh, it looks like it's line right here, line 62. And so the comment says, uh, handle index is called when your Battlesnake is created and refreshed by play.battlesnake.com. Battlesnake info response contains information about your Battlesnake, including what it should look like on the game board. So the my response to this command, your Battlesnake's response to this command is going to control how it actually shows up on the board. And you can see here, um, there's a couple options. There's an API version, which we're not going to touch. Um, I could uh, I could sign this Battlesnake if I wanted to put my username here. We're not going to worry about that right now. The ones that we're going to worry about, the ones we're going to have fun with, are color, head, and tail. So we can actually customize how our snake appears on the game board. Um, what we can do, so in the docs here, uh, it says uh, see Battlesnake personalization uh, for how to customize your Battlesnake's appearance using these values. So I'll click that. And there's a whole bunch of really good examples here on how to choose a color, how to choose a, a head and a tail. 
So let's pick, let's pick a color. We're gonna pick this sort of uh, this blue pastelly blue color. Um, and all we have to do is just change the values that are being returned in this function. So I'm gonna paste my color in there. Um, so that'll get us to be this blue color. Let's choose another head and a tail. Uh, let's choose, um, I like the beluga. If we're gonna be blue, let's be a beluga. So we're gonna go beluga head and tail. Let's choose round bum. So we'll be a beluga head with a round bum tail and we'll be this blue color. So once I've, um, made those changes. I can I can delete these comments now because it's already done. Once I've made those changes, uh, I just need to restart the my my REPL and then the and then my battle snake will start responding with the new information. So I can just stop and then hit run again. And now it's up and running. You'll see here the information that I'm returning has the new color, has the new head, has the new tail, so it looks like all that took effect. And what I can do is I can go back to uh, Battlesnake, and on my uh, uh, Battlesnake list, where all my Battlesnakes are listed, there's this refresh button. So I can hit refresh, and that will actually resend the command to get the latest colors, heads, and tails from my Battlesnake. So I hit refresh. So that I was successfully uh, refreshed, and now I can see I'm this blue color um, with my with my custom head and my custom tail. I can go back here. I can say create rematch, and that's going to create a new game using my new appearance. So awesome! We're still moving in ways we don't understand yet, um, but we've got the color and the and the head and the tail that we want. So that's awesome. Uh, we've also know now that we can like we can make changes to this code in Replit. We can stop it and run it again, and then that will take effect uh, in the live game. So let's go. That was the changing appearance section. Now let's go to changing behavior. Uh, this is where it gets more fun. So um, all right. So changing behavior. What it says here, so I don't, we don't know what it's doing. Let's take a look at what it's doing, see if we can make sense of it, and let's try to get our battle snake to do something else. Uh, so it says locate the move uh, function inside main.go or the handle move function. Uh, here we go. Uh, it says we were like we respond to this with an up, down, left, or right, and then that can that controls how our battle snake moves on every turn. So let's look at the code. Uh, the code says handle move is called for each turn of each game. Valid responses are up, down, left, or right. Uh, to do, use the information in the move request object, which is here, uh, to determine your next move. So it's this request variable here. Um, so let's look at what's happening. So we're getting the request, we're decoding it. Uh, then we're setting this, uh, slide, this list to possible moves. So we're making uh, a list of all the moves we can do, so we can go up, down, left, or right. And then it looks like the starter, the the go starter project just moves randomly. So it says move equals possible moves at random position. So it's randomly choosing from up, down, left, or right. It's creating a move response object, returning that move. Uh, it also prints that move, which is nice. So we can see it down here in the logs, this is what this is. And then it replies. So all, if, if I understand this correctly, um, all this Battlesnake does by default is just move randomly in one of four directions. So that explains sort of the erratic behavior we are seeing. Like if we, if we look at this game, it goes down, right, 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 down, left, down, and then it goes back up and runs into itself. Uh, if you look at the logs, actually, that matches that exactly, right? Down, right, 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 down, left, down, up. Yeah. Um, so that's, if I create another game, that's, that's clearly what's happening. So we're just moving randomly, which is why we're not doing very well. So let's do, um, let's not worry so much about, uh, surviving longer. Let's, let's just try to do something else. Let's try to do something besides move randomly. So let's do, um, what if we just, we can leave all that code as is. What if we just say move equals up? 
let's just do that. Let's just make our battle sync just we just want it to go up instead of instead of moving randomly. We're still going to select a random move, but then we're just going to replace it with with up. So let's stop and rerun. Actually, let's let's make it go. Uh, let's make it go down. Or let's make it go left. It's more interesting. Uh, we'll stop. Run. Uh, I'll go over here. I'll create a new game. So now we're only going left. I can see in my logs. Snake only responds with a left move. I run the game. Our battle snake goes left and runs off the board, which is awesome. We can we can now control this. If we wanted to go down, I do the same thing. I can set it to down. I can stop it. I can run it. Um, go here. Create a rematch. And we'll see now our snake just goes down and it goes in the game. It goes down, runs off, runs off the board. So, OK, so we're able to. Now we're able to actually uh, change the direction that our snake is moving. So instead of moving randomly, we're just forcing it to move in one direction. Um, let's go back to the tutorial. Um, so that's how we update it. That's how we run. We know how to run new games. We know how to try out changes. Let's talk about actually like making our battle snake smarter than it currently is and try to last a little bit longer. So in the in the instructions in the README here, it actually has there's a, there's a this handy list of goals um, that you probably want to try to do early on. And these are sort of like base survival goals that will let your battle snake live a little bit longer and actually be competitive against some of the other other developers that are just building their first battle snake as well. So um, some good goals here, avoid colliding with yourself, uh, avoid colliding with walls, uh, try to move towards food, avoid colliding other snakes. So these are all good goals to do. Let's try to avoid walls because I think that's really interesting because right now, like if you look at the games we're playing, we're just running into walls. So let's try to not run into walls and, and see what we can do. So let's say, um, Let's go back to our code. Instead of saying move equals down, let's say, um, well, uh, so let's let's first of all we need to figure out where we are, so we can figure out if we can move, uh, if we're going to move off the board or not. So, uh, if you look at this request variable here, it says game request. If we go to where game request is defined, um, game request is here. So I see some of the information I get. Uh, let's look at you. That looks interesting. So this is this is our battle snake. It's a battle snake object. If I go to a battle snake object, I find there's a head coordinate. So great. So I can look at the uh, head coordinate of where I am before I make my decision on where to move. So let's take a look at that. Let's say uh, let's say if request dot you dot head so um or we can we can even do this a little bit better we can say request you dot head so the head variable is now going to be our head um if our head is currently we're moving down uh move equals down if our head is on the bottom then we don't want to move down because that's just going to run us off the board again so Instead of going to the bottom, let's do, or instead of moving down in that situation, let's do, um, let's try to move left. So uh, for quest.u.head, uh, if head dot, it's a y coordinate, so if head dot y equals zero, uh, let's move left instead. That, that works. That should make us last a little bit, uh, survive a little bit longer. Um, let's stop, run. I'm going to go back to my game, wait for my server to restart. It's restarted. I'm going to say create rematch. And I can see in the output here, we go down, 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 and then we go left. So there we go, down and then left. Awesome. So that worked. So we went down until the bottom row, and then we went left. Uh, but then we ran off the board to the left. So let's do something different. Let's say uh, if head.x equals zero. So if we're in, in this leftmost column here, uh, let's say move equals up. So we'll go up instead. We'll stop that and we'll run that. All right, let's, uh, there 
There we go. Okay. So that worked. So um, our default move was down. So we went down until uh, our Y coordinate was zero. And then we went left until our X coordinate was zero. And then we went up and then we ran off the board. So that gives you an idea. There's a, that's a, that's a very um, simple way to avoid some walls. And you could, you could see how you could add more conditionals here to avoid other walls and make different decisions and how, how you want your battle snake to move. Um, but that's sort of the the core uh, development process here. So you're going to look at look at information provided to you in the game request, and then use it to make decisions on what you want your move to actually be. Uh, I think that's as well. Okay, let's let's do one more thing. So there's something interesting you can do here. Uh, let's change this down. Right left. So. Um, what if we just wanted our, if we wanted our battle snake could just go in a circle, which I think would be interesting. So if we set our possible moves to be up, so we'll go up first, then right, then down, then left, and then just we just want to loop that. We just want to continue with that process. So what we can do is instead of setting move to be a random move, we'll get rid of this code too. We can say move equals possible moves at. Um, and we can use the turn number to determine. So on turn, on the first turn, we want to go up. On the second turn, we want to go right, and so on and so on. So we can do uh, request.board, or I think it's just request.turn. If it's not, it'll tell us um, uh, mod uh, four. So we want the remainder of the turn divided by four to, to decide which of these values we want to do. Um, if this doesn't make sense to you, um, it's, it's fine. This is just like a um, uh, programming concept. Um, so if it doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. There's other, ways, there's other ways to accomplish this as well. This is a really just a short way to do it. So let's run this code. So what this should do is on turn zero, we'll go up. Turn one, we'll go right, down, left, and then we'll just loop uh, until the game is done. Oh, we need to... Um, Okay, so that's running now. We'll go here, we'll create a rematch. Awesome, so you can see here we're in our output, we're just moving in this circle, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we wanted. If I go to the game and I replay the game, we're doing it. So we're moving, we're just moving in a constant loop uh, until turn 100 where we actually run out of food. We run out of health, sorry. Uh, and we starve and we are eliminated. So, uh, awesome. That's another way to program your snake, right? Like one way to do it, one way to avoid the walls was to see where we are and not run into them. Another one was to just use an algorithm that never gets near the walls, uh, which is what, what that one looks like. So it gives you an idea of all the different ideas you can do and all the different strategies. And we see we always see new creative ideas and new creative strategies being played. So um, strongly recommend that you try new things and try new ideas and try different ways to program your snake. There's a infinite possibilities in terms of how you can actually get your, your battle snake to move and how your strategy can uh, potentially defeat other, other, especially smarter snakes. I think um, that's where we're going to leave that for now. So uh, if you wanted to, you could, you could copy this code directly uh, and get a snake that's, a battle snake that's doing either of those two strategies. Um, if you wanted to go further, I'd strongly suggest looking at how to avoid yourself as well as how to maybe move towards food. And then um, once you've got those figured out, figure out how to avoid other snakes as well. I will show you really quickly um, when you create a game, if I go here and I create a game with this snake, you can actually add your snake <coughs> You can actually add your battle snake to the game multiple times and make it a multiplayer um, game. So here I've added uh, four instances of my one snake. I'm going to hit start. I can see here, so I'm getting four requests per turn to the server. Uh, I'm going to go run the game, and they all just go in loops, and then I think they'll all just be eliminated on turn 100. Yeah, so it's a four-way tie, um, and they all just get eliminated on turn uh, 100. So. Um, is another way to see how your snake behaves against other snakes without actually going up against other battle snakes directly, um, just to try different scenarios out. I think that's going to be it for now. 
uh, yeah, awesome. Thanks for uh, tuning in and watching. Uh, good luck if you're trying to write your first battle snake and go. Awesome, that's fantastic. If you need help, you can find us on. Uh, there's a Slack community. Uh, there's a, a public Discord. We're on Twitter. Um, we're also uh, on Twitch periodically, and so you, you can always drop it in and ask questions and chat. Uh, we're happy to help out as much as we can. And uh, hopefully you can get involved in one of the upcoming arenas or one of the upcoming tournaments that we run. And maybe you can win some prizes by uh, programming a, a smarter snake than a, a smarter battle snake than, than other developers. So uh, thanks so much for watching and good luck. We'll see you later.